fine everyone in this presentation we will be looking into in detail the pinnaeus digestivus the pinnaeus that is a common marine prawn the digestive system is composed of two parts that is the uh, alimentary canal and the digestive glands okay so here we have a, a figure which shows the digestive system here this is the alimentary canal through which actually the food passes through so the alimentary canal is a uh, tube which through which the food passes through it starts with mouth uh, and then it ends in anus but the digestion of food has to take place with the help of enzymes and these enzymes are produced by glands or digestive glands in the case of pineus they have only a single digestive gland and that is the hepatopancreas which are associated with the stomach part of the alimentary canal so as we can see the uh, digestive system it is composed of uh, uh, two parts that is the alimentary canal and digestive glands alimentary canal as we have all as we already know it is uh, a straight it is a tube through which the food actually passes and it extends from mouth to anus the alimentary canal can be divided into three parts in the case of pineus that is the foregut midgut and hindgut the foregut or it is otherwise known as stomodium uh, and uh, it is uh, it includes uh, mouth buccal cavity esophagus and stomach uh, midgut it is otherwise referred as mesenteron or mesodium and it is uh, composed of intestine the last part of the posterior most part of the alimentary canal it is otherwise referred as hindgut and it is also known as proctodium and it is uh, it includes rectum and anus okay, that is the last part of the uh, alimentary canal the foregut and the midgut they are lined by cuticle the chitinous cuticle actually the uh, uh, what you call the stomodium and the proctodium they are being provided with a cuticular lining which is in continuation with the outer uh, covering okay the exo uh, what you call the outer body is covered with a chitinous cuticle isn't it and that is continued into the stomodium and the proctodium where they form the internal cuticular lining while the midgut it is not provided with any cuticular lining instead they are lined by endoderm they have an endodermal lining that is the difference between the midgut foregut and the hindgut okay now you can see this is the position of the uh, whole structure and uh, here are the mouth then we have very small uh, buccal cavity uh, similarly a very short vertical tube the esophagus which uh, opens into a very massive um, stomach region that continues into a very long narrow uh, midgut that is the intestine and then uh, opens into the rectum and the anus which forms the, the hind okay now what are the uh, peculiar features of all these parts so when we see about the foregut as we have already mentioned it is composed of mouth uh, buccal cavity so that as in stomach the mouth is a longitudinal slit on the uh, mid ventral side on the ventral side of the head and it is positioned uh, uh, mid ventrally between the third and the fourth cephalic segments i hope you remember that the uh, the uh, body of the prawn or the pineus it is divided into cephalothoracic region and abdomen and cephalothoracic region it is composed of five cephalic regions and in this uh, in between the third and the fourth cephalic segment mid ventrally you can find the longitudinally uh, longitudinal slit which is referred as a mouth over here the mouth is being protected by or guarded by uh, structures all around on the anterior side of the slit almost similar to the upper lip in the case of uh, like humans almost similar like similar to the upper lip we can find a structure which is known as a labrum okay so labrum it is a chitinous plate which is present on the anterior side of the uh, mouth opening now on the sides you have the mandibles on both the sides you have a mandible each and on the posterior side just like the lower lip you have a labium okay the labium is a bilobed structure uh, and each of the lobe of the uh, labium it is referred as paranatic 
Okay, so mouth it is a longitudinal slit which is present on the ventral side and it is positioned between the third and the fourth cephalic segment. And you can see that all around the mouth they have structures which guard the mouth. On the anterior side they have uh, they have a labrum. On the posterior side they have a bilobed labium. Okay, and on either side the lateral sides they have a mandible each. So two mandibles all together. So this is what the mouth is all about. Now <coughs> the mouth opens into buccal cavity. Right, buccal cavity is a very short uh, vertical tube. Okay. Okay. So, here in this figure you can find this is a mouth opening, this is a big, you can see it is ventrally positioned and uh, on the anterior side we have the labrum, this is the structure and this one is the labium, this is spelling mistake over here, this is the labium and on either side we have the mandible. Okay, now buccal cavity, uh, the mouth opens into the structure which is referred as a buccal cavity, it is a very short uh, small vertical tube. And the inner wall, the cuticular lining, uh, the internal cuticular lining of the buccal cavity, it is thick but uh, irregularly folded. And uh, uh, these, uh, uh, you can see that the uh, mandibles, the molar process of mandibles, it projects into the buccal cavity. Okay. And the buccal cavity on the other side, it opens into esophagus. Okay. Esophagus, on the other hand, it is again a short but wide tube. And uh, uh, it runs vertically upward between the buccal cavity and the stomach. Now, the walls of the uh, esophagus, just like in the case of buccal cavity, the walls of the uh, esophagus, which is again cuticular lining, <coughs> it is also formed, uh, it is also produced into what you call the longitudinal folds, exactly four longitudinal folds. So, you can find that the internal cuticular lining of the um, esophagus it is uh, produced into four long, uh, prominent folds and these are positioned anteriorly so we have an anterior pole we have a posterior pole and we have two lateral folds okay all those uh, almost uh, along the median uh, position okay so that is uh, about the um, esophagus and the cuticle these cuticular lining of the esophageal wall they do bear uh, bristles okay uh, and uh, we can find that these uh, the uh, what you call the esophagus it leads into the stomach right? now uh, regarding the stomach unlike esophagus and buccal cavity stomach is a very spacious very large uh, part of the alimentary canal and almost occupying more than half of the cephalothoracic region and it is um, uh, divided into two, the cardiac uh, region and the pyloric region. Uh, it is an unequal division. Cardiac stomach or cardiac region is slightly is it is larger, while the pyloric uh, uh, stomach it is smaller as compared uh, with the cardiac. Okay. Now we can find what are the differences between cardiac stomach. Now cardiac stomach is meant for storage of food, uh, so that the food which reaches the stomach is completely ground into the paste like manner okay so it is a storage uh, a, uh, organ as well as it is a uh, part where the food is ground into fine so uh, while the pyloric stomach on the other hand it is a part where the food is sorted right almost ground food uh, uh, from the cardiac stomach reaches the pyloric stomach isn't it in the cardiac stomach the uh, food is ground into almost a paste like manner right and that is what passes into the pyloric stomach in the pyloric stomach, what happens is the food is sorted. Okay, whatever digested food is there, it is sorted from the undigested part. The undigested part of the food is the one which is being passed on to the next part of the alimentary canal. So there is a sorting which happens in the pyloric stomach, and hence that part part is known as a filtering apparatus. Okay, cardiac stomach is known as a ga uh, gastric mill or grinding mill. We can say or grinding aperture or gastric and uh, uh, Image. So, that is what happens in the cardiac stomach. Okay. Now, as we have already mentioned, food is ground into almost a paste-like manner in the cardiac stomach. So, for grinding them, they need some certain specific structures and that is found along the cuticular uh, wall of the cardiac stomach. On the floor of the uh, what you call cardiac stomach, we can find numerous cuticular 
folds okay and these cuticular folds they bear setae and spicules similarly on the walls on the dorsolateral walls you can see uh, the uh, uh, cuticular lining they bear teeth like uh, structures very stout teeth like structures uh, these are known as denticles okay so these denticles setae and spicules they help in grinding the food which reaches the cardiac stomach fine so what happens over there is uh, the stomach as such it is muscular in nature so it contracts and relaxes during contraction the structures inside that is the setae the spicules the denticles etc it works upon the food which has reached over there and helps in grinding the food okay so hence this kind of a uh, what you call a structure uh, it is known as mastication this particular function it is known as mastication isn't it just like what happens with the help of the teeth inside the human mouth or the human buccal cavity fine so it is almost similar like uh, similar to that process so it is a mastication process and hence this cardiac stomach is also referred as internal masticatory apparatus okay and grinding the food so it is as, uh, happening in the stomach so it is also known as gastric milk okay so that is what happens in the case of cardiac stomach now this kind of a ground food is the one which passes into the pyloric stomach and in the pyloric stomach uh, what happens is the digested food uh, sorry what called ground food has to be separated from the undigested or the unground food okay and this is what happens in the pyloric stomach and for that purpose they need a filtering apparatus or filtering structures and this filtering structures is made by the structures present on the cuticular lining of the pyloric stomach the cuticular lining of the pyloric stomach it is produced into longitudinal folds four longitudinal folds and these folds are referred as lappets or valvuli okay and uh, depending upon their position we have dorsomedian uh, ventromedian and two laterals okay so we have four uh, different longitudinal folds and these folds are referred as lappets so four uh, lappets can be found on the uh, cuticular lining of the pyloric stomach and these uh, lappets they bear certain structures like chitinous plates comb like bristles these plates and bristles they function as filtering apparatus they function they actually bring about filtering of the digested uh, ground food with the unground or the undigested food okay so this is what happens in the case of pyloric stomach now when you see about the uh, uh, structure uh, structures associated with the foregut that is a hepatopancreas hepatopancreas it is a, the only digestive gland present in the pineus and it is associated with the foregut region of the alimentary canal it is as such a bilobed structure okay and we can find that the hepatopancreas it is uh, found uh, surrounding the uh, what you call the yeah, stomach region okay it is found surrounding the stomach region on the ventral on the lateral and the posterior sides okay so that is how it is being positioned so hepatopancreas it is present on the uh, ventral then uh, what you call uh, lateral as well as the posterior sides of the pyloric stomach and as the name suggests hepato means liver pancreas uh, it is almost so hepato pancreas of pineus is a single organ which takes up the role of liver pancreas and along with that the intestinal glands of vertebrae so whatever functions are being uh, done by the liver pancreas and intestinal glands of humans almost similar functions are brought about by the single organ hepato pancreas in the case of pineus i hope that is clear to you okay and the hepatopancreas it secretes proteolytic that is protein digesting enzymes amylolytic that is carbohydrate digesting enzymes and lipolytic enzymes that is lipid digesting enzymes so all these three kinds of enzymes are produced by the same hepatopancreas itself okay so all these are poured into the uh, what you call the uh, stomach okay it opens into the stomach so as already mentioned it is a bilobe structure so from each of the lobe a duct arises and these ducts it is referred as hepatopancreatic duct so hepatic hepatopancreatic duct it opens into the posterior part of the pyloric stomach okay now where does this hepatopancreas actually originate from it originates from an outgrowth okay in the embryonic uh, stage in the case of pineus what happens is a pair of outgrowths develop from the 
mid gut okay and this later develop into the hepatopancreas and these outgrowths are referred as hepatic cecum okay